the school of aquaponics. Greetings to all aquaponic gods, potential aquaponic gods, and biscuit-headed growers alike. Woo, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Straight from Aquaponics Paradise, this is Ask the Aquaponics God. You've got the questions, he's got the answers, and if I don't have the answers, I'll go and get them. Now, let me tell you a quick secret real quick before we get going. You see this right here? Face is looking a little smooth, so a lot of you guys probably don't recognize me. Like, who is that? Who, who, who the heck is that? Yes, I chopped it off. The beard is no longer there. I had to let my skin breathe, so I went ahead and chopped it off, let my roots get oxygenated, if you will, um, and then I'll see if I'll end up growing it back out or not. Um, but I haven't had my, my beard chopped off for, since I got out of the Marine Corps. It was about four years ago, so you know it's been a while since I've let it breathe, so you know that's just what's going on right now. Now let's get into the question for the day. Um, this is coming from uh, Jeremy Young. It says, unrelated, notice people having issues cleaning media beds. Anyone thought of running a compressed airline at the bottom of the beds with a small perforated pipe to agitate the bed while flushing? Hand valve to turn on slash off? We do this part slash tool, vats at work. So this is the question I got from Jeremy. And, you know, the first thing that came to my mind um, when I read it, I'm like, what the freak is Jeremy talking about, man? I had a, some type of concept of what he was re referring to, but I wanted to be clear. I'm like, I kind of understand what you're saying, but send me a schematic or a blueprint or a video of something of what you're referring to so I can be sure on what it is that you're talking about. So what did Jeremy do? He went ahead and he made a video on exactly what he's referring to, and he sent it over to the aquaponics guy. So that's what we're going to take a look at right now so everyone could understand exactly what Jeremy is referring to. So what the freak is he talking about? So let's take a look at, look at that real quick, and then we'll come back, and then we'll kind of go over it and discuss it and see what um, uh, Jeremy's on to. All right, I was asked to make a video or draw a diagram, so I opted for the video. All right, on this tank design, you will see an airline coming in here on the side from the wall. Line comes right here, makes its way around. And then right here it ties in and zigzags back and forth. It's perforated laid air comes through and as you tank the tank. You'll notice there is a gap in between the airline and the top and the bottom. The standoffs welded in the side. The grate can be removed. Now I'm going to turn on the air. That agitates the water very well. Now, if this grate wasn't in here, the air would actually channel through and wouldn't agitate the water as well, cleaning the parts. I see this as a viable method of cleaning media beds and aquaponics, so I figure I'd share the idea on reapplying this. Thanks. So before we get into talking about the video that Jeremy just presented, I want to say first that the bar has been raised. Jeremy has just raised the bar. For now on, anyone who wants questions to be featured on Ask the Aquaponics Guide, you want your question answered, it has to be in the form of a video. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's going to be in the form of a video, and you're going to send it. Um, you're going to send me the link. Upload it on YouTube. Send me the link so we can go ahead and um, and present it and show everyone else so we know exactly what you're what you're talking about and what you're referring to. And it also allows me to know who the serious ones are that are asking these questions versus the ones who are just asking just to ask and are not too, are not very serious about it. So video is where it's at. Now you're going to have to either send this on Instagram to, uh, uh, to uh, the aquaponics guide uh, on Instagram, or you can just send it on the homepage of the YouTube video um, on the school of aquaponics. And you can post your link there to your video so we can answer the question. So it's a video no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's the only way that questions are getting asked on Ask the Aquaponics God. 
Woo, now, let's move on. So looking at Jeremy's, um, what he's presenting, I first want to say that the concept that Jeremy is talking about, I really, really like it. I like that he's seen a problem in aquaponics because this is a problem here, uh, mixing up um, the, or agitating and, and, and cleaning out the media beds because a lot of people out there, they don't know that the media bed must be clean. A lot of people think that this is just a plug and play. You just put it together, let the fish do their thing and just leave it there and it's gonna, and it's gonna work forever. That's not the case, ladies and gentlemen. That's not the case. These media beds must be cleaned out. I recommend after every crop harvest, if you have a bed full of uh, 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 crops, whatever crop it is, at the end of the harvest, you need to stir up uh, uh, the, the, um, the media inside of the, um, inside of the bed. You need to stir it up and you need to agitate those solids because what's happening is denitrification. We talked about this maybe a video ago about denitrification. Denitrification is taking place in, in, in the majority of you guys' systems, media bed systems, and a lot of people don't even know. So you need to agitate those and disturb those anaerobic areas. And a way that you can know that if your system has denitrification taking place, one symptom is that if your pH is stable, if your pH is staying stable and it's not going down or going up and it's pretty much staying stable uh, uh, day in and day out, then you can probably look for denitrification um, as one of the culprits. So this is something that a lot of people don't even don't know about. A lot of people don't know about the, 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 um, the, the agitating the solids. But Jeremy's coming up with a solution that because because it's a lot of work. That's one reason people probably are being ignorant to it because I wouldn't want to clean all that out either. I wouldn't want to have to keep cleaning out the media beds. That stuff is heavy, especially if you're using gravel. It's heavy. It gets tiring and it gets old very fast. So Jeremy's presenting a method to where people could just turn on a valve and and it self cleans. And I like the concept, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I like the concept. But just like everything else, there's always kickers. And there's always problems. So, uh, w like we said, a good thing that could come out of this is that you can agitate the solids and people don't have to go through and do the labor, which is this. If you can get this to work, Jeremy, this is a major plus, a major plus. This will cut labor costs for this system tremendously. So if you can get them, if you can get that to work, then you got something go uh, good going. Um, uh, the only thing that I would, well, one of the things that I can think about that could be an issue with this system, I'm not sure how, you plan it, how you're planning on operating it, if it's just going to be continuously going on or how often it's going to be going, the, um, the air hoses, how, how often is that air going to be released um, from those tubes? Um, because if you keep it constantly going, then there's a chance that a lot of those solids, a lot of the larger solids are going to get broken down. And this is where the issue comes in because we want the solids to stay large. The problem in aquaponics and even in aquaculture or recirculating aquaculture is these fine solids, these fine, fine solids, non settable solids that keep circulating through the system. These are the ones that's causing a, a problem and disease and um, uh, off flavors on the fish when you when you harvest. It's these little sol these little particles. So if it's gonna, if you agitating the water is just gonna break down the bigger solids and keep them uh, circulating throughout the water column, then that might be a problem. It might be an issue. So what you're gonna probably have to do is you're gonna have to take some time modifying this because you have to test it out. In theory, it sounds great. I, I love the concept. I love the concept of working smarter like this and figuring out these type of um, uh, solutions. But the um, the the problem is we just still have to test it out. That's the thing. Everything sounds good in theory when, we, when we're hypothesizing, but now we have to run the test. It's going to take you a few years to get this right from what I would estimate. It's going to take you a few years. You're going to have to run trials. You're going to have to see how this thing is operating. You're probably going to have to run, um, if you really want to do it right, you're probably going to have to take water samples, check how much dissolved solids are in there, comparing to other types of, um, comparing the, the system that you're creating to a, a system that doesn't have this set up, that is just, you know, it's just regularly running without having any, um, uh, uh, any, anything extra agitating it. You're going to have to compare water samples. Like there's a lot of things that you're going to have to do. Probably do some modifications to test how much you can, um, how much, uh, air you can, uh, push through before it starts to have negative impacts, 
how often you have to um, uh, open the valves um, so the denitrification is not present in the system. So you're going to have to run serious tests on this before this is like a real viable option to uh, serious growers. Because, you know, like I said, everything sounds good in theory, but we want something that's actually working. But I think if you get this thing right, that this is something great, man. I really like, I really like the idea that you did, that, that did you come up with. Um, this, the only thing is we just need some testing. You know, I, I, that's it testing so i would like for you to keep me updated on what if you put this thing together keep me updated and um and find out how it's working and then um i, I really want to see how this is gonna how this is gonna work out in the end so again just keep me posted let us know exactly your progress on this if you're coming up with any trials if you're you might need to if you're not sure how to run testing you might need someone to, to that's gonna assist you might have to pass this idea on um to someone else i haven't seen anyone else come up with this type of idea. I'm, I'm sure someone has thought about it because it seems very basic and um, easy to, to, to comprehend, easy to understand. So I'm sure someone has come up with it and I just haven't seen it. And if, it, if, it, if someone has come up with it and it's not out on the market, then it's probably a good indication that there was the negative effects outweigh the positive effects. So that might be the case. Or it could be that just no one has tried it out. And um, maybe you can go ahead and do it. And if anybody else has any other ideas to add to it, then um, then go right ahead. But I'm pretty sure you're just going to have to do some tweaking, some modifications, and do some trials, and that'll be it. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit, Jeremy. Um, and, you know, I wish you the best of luck on this project. So this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. And until next time, I need the video sent. I told you already. I need the video sent. The Aquaponics Guide on Instagram right here on the home page on YouTube. You can put it right on there. Links, videos, that's it. Until next time, woo!